Here at Marin University, one of the fundamental values, the Franciscan values which we espouse, not only in our teaching, our words, but also hopefully uh, we are the words written on our flesh and are espoused and witnessed to in the way we relate to one another. That value is the respect for the dignity of each individual. All of us carry within us, because we are created in the image and likeness of God, because we have been redeemed by the precious blood of His Son, Jesus, we have a fundamental dignity which no one, nothing, can separate us from or can erase in us. We here at Marion wish to form our students and all of our, ourselves included in this basic fundamental value. It's the responsibility of all of us, the entire community, teachers, students, staff, administrative, ops, all of us are responsible for creating this climate in which each individual feels respected, loved, accepted for who she or he is. This is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus came to teach us. Not only who God is, the truth about who God is, but who our, we are, who our others are. And Jesus did this through his teachings and in a special way for the way he related to others. How he reached out to those who felt marginalized or who were effectively marginalized from religion, from society, from those who did not participate in the goods of this world. He reached out to the lepers and he reached out to the tax collectors and to the Roman soldiers and centurions. He reached out to the adulterous woman, to the prostitutes. And in the presence of Jesus, each one of them felt special. Jesus, with his eyes, penetrated below the surface and to see the precious person that individual was and he knew how to call that forth he knew how to help that person grow into that dignity and that preciousness which was a god-given dignity they could then grow into that fullness of person that they were called to be when they were created this is what Jesus did. He came to teach us the truth about ourselves. And even though we know that as Christians, as believers, we know that with our head, but there are times when our heart betrays us. And if we fall and we fail and we sin, we stray, we hurt others, we cause division. When we might feel we've lost that preciousness. When we might feel that we are not worthy of God's love, that's when we need to go back at the foot of the cross. That's when we need to go back and meditate upon those open arms of Jesus and recognize that those arms are open because their arms are welcoming. Come, I wish to embrace you once again and to affirm in you your worth and your dignity. Here is my open heart. Come rest in it. It's a place of safety, of refuge, where each of us can be, even in our sinfulness, and at the same time know that we are loved and accepted by God. We need to do that and continually do that throughout our lives more than once, many times. We need to reclaim what we already know with our head. We already believe but we need to renew that belief and to reclaim it for ourselves. But you know, it's not only about ourselves. It's also about others. Because just as we 
have claimed this truth about who we are in God's eyes. We are told today, in the today's readings, what we have learned in secret, what we have heard whispered in our ears and in our heart, in prayer, in the reading of Scripture, in contemplation, in adoration. What we have discovered there, we are told in today's readings, go out, proclaim it from the housetops, share that good message, that good news, and help others to discover it as well. I think we are in a moment, a very special moment of our history, of our, our country and our church. Through the Black Lives Matter, we are witnessing a people who for too long, for hundreds of years, have been beaten down, whose rights and dignity have not fully been accepted or respected, maybe on paper, but not in practice. Racism, prejudices, exclusions are rampart, whether they be implicit or explicit, they're there. And through the movement of Black Lives Matter and the, and the, and the events that we witnessed during these last weeks and months, I think there is an awakening going on. Awakening in the minds and the hearts of many, many, many Americans in society and hopefully in our church as well. And as scriptures say in another part, talking about Christ, I would like to use that same image to speak about Black Lives Matter. Scripture tells us that what was the cornerstone or what was marginalized, what was left out, what was seen as less, has now become the cornerstone upon which our community is built. We might say that just as black lives have been excluded for too long, they now become the cornerstone upon which Hopefully our new society will be built. A cornerstone upon which you and I and every one of us are responsible to put another brick and lay another brick and lay another brick until we form this new house. A new society in which all people are invited. All people are respected and can find a place at the table. This is the awakening that the Black Lives Movement is having for all of us. As Christians and as members of this Marian community, we are called to be a prophetic people. We are called to take a prophetic stance. We are called to support, to hear their cry, the cry of all the oppressed, black lives, brown lives, of our lesbian and, and gay and transvestite and gender people. For anyone who are considered at one time or by one people or another lesser or excluded, as prophets of this new order of things, we are to be there with them, making their voice heard, joining our voice to theirs, advancing their cause so that all will be respected. We are called as prophets, as the prophets did of old, as John the Baptist did, as Jesus did. We are also called to speak truth to power. It's not easy. And just as the prophets and John the Baptist and Jesus suffered for it and eventually gave their lives and shed their blood for them, we too, when we take a stance, when we join our voices to theirs in calling for justice, for recognition of the dignity of all, we will be criticized. We might even be marginalized with them when we take a stand, when we walk with them and by them, with them. It's not easy. 
That's why Jesus says in the gospel today, um, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. We know through Jesus and through his death and resurrection that truth will prevail over lies, that love is stronger than hatred, that communion and diversity is stronger than division and divisiveness. We know that. We know that this will come, that justice will proceed the achievement of the peace that we all desire and wish for our lives, our families, our church and society. So today the question which is posed to us, the question to which we have to answer, each one of us, we have a choice to make. We can choose to continue to be the sons and the daughters of an old world which is dying. Or we can be, choose to be the mothers and the fathers of a new world, a new society, which is being born. You and I, as Christians, and as community of Marin University, know where we are called to stand. The choice is clear. We will stand by our words, by our attitudes, for building a relationship in which all people are recognized and respected and their dignity and their rights are affirmed. As brothers and sisters and as sons and daughters of God.